I told you I was going to be dealing with a subject on dealing with disappointment. I think we've all been disappointed sometimes in our lives. Amen. So tonight I want to take it from a little different angle tonight, but dealing with disappointment. We're going to be in Luke 13. These are some parables that Jesus was teaching, and I believe it's going to speak to your heart tonight. So um, you can follow along with me. I'm going to be reading out of the ESV version here in verse 6 of chapter 13 tonight. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, look for three years he said, for three years, and you think about three years here, I think about Jesus' ministry. Jesus' ministry was what? It was three years. So obviously during this time, he is looking. For three years now, I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, sir, let it alone this year also. In other words, he said, give me one more year. Somebody say, Lord, give me one more year to work on this. He's asking for one more year. And this is what he said I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to dig around it and I'm going to put on manure. Mm. Smelling good, isn't it? He said, then... If it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Now listen, I'm sure not everything in your life has turned out the way you planned it. Maybe it's your life, your career, maybe your children, maybe your dog hadn't turned out the way you had wanted it to turn out. But if, if it could be a friend that is disappointing you if it could it may be even be a spouse that is bringing disappointment many things in life bring us disappointments but i want you to do me a favor tonight if you're close to someone would you tell somebody this for me say you are not a disappointment amen you are not a disappointment See, apparently after Jesus had surveyed Israel after three years of ministering there, he didn't find what he was looking for in the religious community. In order, order to illustrate his sense of disappointment that the religious had uh, created in his day, he taught them this lesson from the vineyard. The owner of the vineyard is disappointed. The manager of the vineyard is disappointing. And there is the tree in the vineyard that is dysfunctional. It's not producing. At some point in your life, you've been disappointed. You've been disappointing. Or you've been dysfunctional. Sometimes you go looking for something in a place where you have sown seed and it's just not there. And you can be greatly disappointed. You can invest time and energy in people and in things and it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to turn out. Have you ever worked hard for something that failed and it was disappointing to you? When you experience what you expected did not happen. It's disappointing. When something you have worked on, when what you planted did not produce, it is disappointing. It's frustrating when you have something planted on the inside that is not producing on the outside. To have a dream to have something on the inside that seems to even be dying on the inside. So when you look at this parable, and no matter what angle you look at the parable that is being taught here, it's disappointing for all that are involved in it. 
The owner is expecting something. The vine dresser is expecting something. The fig tree was supposed to produce fruit and it's not producing. But when it is when it did not produce after three years, the owner insisted that it had to grow or it had to go. Somebody say it has to grow or it has to go. It has to grow or it has to go. Because if it's not growing, guess what? It's dying. If it's not growing, it's dying. There is no room for dead things in your life. If you're allowing things in your life that's keeping you from producing fruit, it's a dead thing. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like an owner of a vineyard who comes to the manager of this vineyard. And he says, I've been coming here for three years now and I'm seeking for fruit. Now listen, he says, I've been in the synagogues. There is preaching in the synagogues. There is teaching in, a, in the synagogues. And they're using the law to condemn rather to instruct to righteousness. He said, in other words, he said, there's been a lot of religious activity, but it's not bearing any fruit. Jesus said, if you remember, Jesus said this. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Abraham got this faith thing all started for us. If you remember, God said through Abraham, the descendants of the earth are going to be blessed. In other words, Israel will be greatly blessed through you. I'm going to bless you and you're going to be a blessing. If you are a Christian tonight, you are the seed of Abraham. And what does a seed supposed to do? It is supposed to uh, produce what is on the inside of it. A seed is supposed to grow. Israel was not being fruitful. The seed that was supposed to produce was not producing fruit. And every blessing that pertains to Abraham, it pertains to you and I today. And so when Jesus saw the tree, it looks like nothing like the seed that was put into the ground. And so Jesus had something to say about it. The tree, it represents the leadership, the spiritual leadership of Jesus day and the vineyard represents the nation of Israel but why a fig tree because a fig tree represents peace and it represents prosperity can I tell you what needs to happen uh, in the Christian community today God is saying my people ought to be a people that walk in peace they ought to be a peaceful people. They are a prosperous people, not just financially, but in every area of your life, he wanted to bless you just like he blessed Abraham. When the seed is not producing according to purpose, people suffer. Bad spiritual leadership, it leads to death. It leads to great disappointment, bad leadership in any area of your life. If it's in the home, if it's in the office, or it's in the church, Jesus is disappointed when the seed is not producing what it's supposed to produce. The tree should be producing. The tree should be bringing prosperity and peace. The tree should be bringing a blessing. Let's read verse 6 together. And he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came, what? Seeking fruit on it and found none. What is planted is not producing. I want to tell you this tonight. God will never pick what he did not plant. He'll never pick what he did not plant. He came looking for something that was already in the seed, but it wasn't there. He said, the owner planted 
a fig tree looking for fruit. Who is the owner here? The owner is God. The owner planted the fig tree. He planted the nation of Israel. He planted the people to bring peace and prosperity. He wants the Christian community to prosper. He wants us to be a blessing everywhere we go. Crossroads Community Church, you were planted, you were established to be a blessing and not a disappointment. Amen. You were established. You were planted. There should be fruit on your vine. Can people see the fruit? His expectation wasn't met. He knew what he had put in the ground. And when he came to look at it, he did not see what should be on the tree. Something was definitely wrong. He's thinking, I planted a fig tree and it's not producing figs. Can you relate to your own life today? Never try to produce what God never planted in your life. Never try to produce what God has planted in your life. You will be greatly disappointed trying to make something happen that God has never planted on the inside of you. Trying uh, 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 to make it happen in your own strength you will be greatly disappointed. God is saying, I came looking for figs. Why are you trying to produce oranges? See, it's hard to produce something that God has never put on the inside of you. God never reaches for anything in your life that he did not put in the seed of your life. He'll never come expecting anything else that he hasn't already put on the inside of you. When you try to produce something that's outside of your calling, you'll be greatly disappointed. That's why I'm not in the kitchen. That's why you won't see me in there cooking. You will be greatly disappointed. Let me tell you, you want Dan to stay in there. You want Miss Alicia Jones to stay in there. I don't need to be operating outside of my calling. I've been called to eat and inspect what's been cooked. Amen. We don't need to be producing apples. If we're supposed to be producing figs, your purpose is to produce what is already planted down on the inside of you. Don't need to fake it. Don't need to try to work something up. Don't pretend to be something that you're not. Listen, I struggled with that when the Lord called me into the ministry. I didn't have the hairdo and I didn't have the voice. You know, I, I didn't have the PhD in theology, I struggled. And I thought, well, you know what? I need to produce this and I need to produce this and I need to be this and I need to be that. And I remember the day that the Lord delivered me from me. Aren't you glad for that day? When God sets you free from you and you can be who you are. And you can produce what is on the inside of you. You will be greatly disappointed if you're trying to please everybody around you. Amen. What this tree should be doing, what Israel should have been doing, what the religious community should have been doing the whole time is pleasing God. Can I tell you, if you please God, you will not be a disappointment to God when he comes looking for you, when he comes expecting the fruit on you. You will be delicious. Amen. You will look good. Amen. Disappointment comes when you waste what God has placed down on the inside of you. What should have come forth didn't. What should be producing is not. Where fruit should be, there is no fruit. When God reaches for the fruit in your life, there is none. That is disappointing. That is very disappointing. You will always be disappointed when you try to pick something that God did not plant. If God picked you for a task, stop whining about it. Ooh, come on. 
If God picked you for the task, stop whining about it. If God wanted somebody better for the task, he would have chosen them. But he chose you. And don't try to produce outside of your purpose or you will be disappointed. He said to the manager, the vine dresser, he said this in verse 7. He said, look, for three years now, basically he is saying, I have been patient for three years. In other words, I look, that's 12 seasons have come and gone. Three cycles have come and gone. After three years, he said, it's still not working. What I have planted is not producing. I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it take up the ground? The vine dresser has looked over the entire vineyard. He's looked over it all. Other fig trees are doing fine. This one fig tree is not producing. All trees were planted in the same ground. All were in the same ground. They all bore the same fruit, but still this one refused to produce. The same ground made all the other trees grow. But this one was refusing to grow. Let's get personal a little bit. Can we do that? Are you using your environment as an excuse of why you can't grow? Are you using weakness as an excuse of why you can't grow? How can others grow and produce around you in the same ground and bear fruit, yet this one tree will not produce? Listen to this. It had the same type seed. It had the same soil. They're all this, what, the seed of Abraham. We're from the seed of Abraham. We had the same soul. We got the same potential. We have the same sun. We have the same water. We have the same time. We have the same season. Can I tell you, there are people who grew up in unloving homes, yet found a way to have a loving and happy marriage. They didn't let what they came from stop them from producing fruit. You can take the biggest disappointments of your life and you can make a decision today that I'm going to produce fruit anyway. You hear me this morning. The unloving home disappointment, it, what it should do is drive you to be more loving and to establish a home that is filled with love. You know, my dad grew up in an alcoholic home. And what it did, it drove my dad to have a home that did not have alcohol in it. And a home that would not be drinkers and occasional drinkers. He didn't want no part of it. My environment is not an excuse as to why I don't produce fruit. You can grow even in bad situations. Your bad situation ought to just be fertilizer for you. It ought to propel you to want to produce fruit anyway. Do you know why my style of leadership is the way it is? Can I be open and honest? Why I lead from the position that I lead from? It's because I've been in church, religious community, all of my life. And can I tell you, I've seen some bad church. I've seen some bad stuff in church. Can I take a water break? And no doubt you probably have to. And when I became a leader of Christian community, when I became a leader of the church, my heart was to please God. My heart is still to please God. Has it been pulled? Yes, it's been pulled. Yes, have I wanted to try to please people? I've done everything in my power to try to please people. You've probably done the same thing. In a pastor's heart, it is to love his sheep. It is want to do good to his sheep. It's want to love them and care for them and nourish them. So what I've done in my life, I've taken all my bad church experiences, 
all my bad spiritual experiences and I still love the church. All it has done is caused me to want to produce more fruit. It's caused me to want to grow even more. It's caused me to want to do more for the kingdom of God than I have ever done. We got to quit making excuses as to why we don't want to grow. Amen. And do God's work anyway. The vine dresser responds, sir, let it alone this year also. In other words, we're going to give it another chance. Aren't you thankful for God that he gave you another chance? And another chance, and I know some of you, another chance, and an, I ain't talking this side, I'm going to talk this side. Eno come on, I don't have enough fingers and toes to how many chances God has given us to grow. Aren't you thankful tonight? Say, Lord, thank you for another chance, another opportunity. You see, the devil has no problem defeating a, a, a person who's easily disappointed. When something that is threatening to cut down what God is growing in your life, you must not tolerate it in your life. The enemy comes to what? To seek, to steal, kill, and to destroy in our lives. But just because you have purpose, it doesn't mean you're going to go out and fulfill your purpose in the kingdom of God. We've let troubles We've let trials, we've let setbacks, we've let the gates of hell that the Lord said would not prevail come against us and stop us and shut us down. Amen. You must be willing to do whatever it takes to produce and to grow. Listen, nothing good grows alone. Nothing good grows alone. Anybody ever planted a garden before? Good Lord. You plant it, and then you walk off from it. Isn't that what you do? And you just let it grow, right? Isn't that what a good gardener does? Absolutely not. My dad has a green thumb. I believe he can grow anything, you know? I, I don't think I have that, or I, it's probably there, but I refuse to, to dig there. I, I hate it. Picking butter beans and peas. Dear God, have mercy. Anybody grow up picking butter beans and peas? Lord, Daddy would always say, you got to fill every one of them. They all got to be, you know, they got to be full. Don't get, if it ain't got bumps all over, they don't pull it. I'm like, dear Lord, you got to go in there. And, and then snakes all up in them peas too. And my daddy, as long as there was peas growing, we were going to be picking peas. I, God blessed our garden so much, it produced out of season. <laughs> I believe God did it on purpose because he knew I didn't like pea picking. <laughs> but you can't leave it alone. If you walk off and leave it, guess what's going to grow? Weeds and more weeds and more weeds are going to grow. You have to tend to it. You have to fertilize it. You got to pull all the weeds up because if you don't pull them up, they'll choke the life out of the good thing that is growing. Can I tell you, you got to get the weeds out of your life or to choke out the good things that want to come out of your life. You will be disappointed if you continue to let weeds grow up in your life. The vine dresser. Leave it alone. So he's saying this so I can work on it. He says, you know what? I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to begin to work on this tree. I, I know there's great disappointment here. Nothing has happened in three years. He doesn't deny the disappointment that he does have. He doesn't even excuse the appointment. But he does say this. I'm going to work with it. He said, I'm going to do two things. And I love this. This is one of my favorite parts here. Somebody say, God's going to do two things. These are the two things. He's going to dig around it, and he's going to put manure on it. Look, get ready, somebody. God's digging. Amen. In other words, he is saying this. I want to get beneath the surface. 
here. He said the problem uh, uh, here appears above surface at the level of, of the leaves here, but the problem here was caused at the level of the roots. So what I got to do, I got to dig around. See, God, you know what he's going to do? He's going to start digging around in your life. Mm. Anybody had God to dig before? To dig into your life. Where the problem appears is not where the problem needs to be dealt with. Where the problem showed up is not where the problem started. Because we all look at the uh, what's going on on the outside, but we need to take a look at the root system. What's going on with the root? The fruit that you can see is always the result of the root that you cannot see. If there is no fruit, check the root. Come on, if there's no fruit, check the root. The man realized that if fruit was going to come from this tree, he could not stay at the surface level. He had to dig around the roots. So he keeps trying to fix it by what he can see on the outside. Isn't it amazing how we try to appease people because they keep acting out? And we... You know, we're kind of trying to help them on the outside. Somebody say it's deep rooted. It's deep rooted. He's got to go in and dig around in there and things have to be taken out of the way so fruit can produce and grow. Somebody say, but this year. Come on, say it again with me. But this year, it is time to start bearing fruit. Come on, I'm not going to wait another three years. I don't want to wait, Lord, another 20 years of not bearing fruit. I want my life to bear fruit. This year, I'm digging in, Lord. I'm, I want you to get to the root in my life. I want to bear fruit. I want to bear much fruit. How about you? You can't fix it at the level of the leaves. You need to dig into the roots. What do we have to do, Pastor? Stop blaming people for our disappointments. Stop blaming our upbringing. How about this one? Stop blaming God. How about this one? Stop blaming genetics. Stop blaming the church. Stop blaming the pastor. If you want to find life, an abundant life, and you want to bear fruit, we all have to stop making excuses as why we are not producing. You're already planted in good ground because the tree is growing. But whatever is going on that is stopping you from producing fruit, you will have to deal with it. Amen? When you start digging around it, look what happens next in Luke 13, 8. And I brought out the King James Version on this because I just thought this was funny. It's got me. And he answered and said unto them, Lord, let it alone this year also till I dig about it and dung it. Sometimes there's nothing left to do but dung it. <laughs> what does God do when he asks you to deal with the disappointments in your life? He dungs it. <laughs> Amen. He said, I'm going to have to dig it, and then I'm going to have to dung it. Somebody say, thank the Lord. He's going to dung me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You don't want to praise God for that, huh? Mm -mm. But he's saying, when I've done it, it's going to feel like failure. But failure is only fertilizer. Somebody say it's only fertilizer. Failure is nothing but fertilizer. It's designed to stimulate the roots. It's designed to motivate the roots to grow. It's designed to nourish the roots to produce. That's what God does here. He digs around in our hearts and in our disappointments of our lives, and he lets the messy stuff cover our lives like fertilizer. What is he doing? We think, Lord, this is going to kill me. But it's to make you fully alive 
in Christ so that you can produce. You don't need to waste another year. Amen. Let God break open the stony grounds of our heart and let him dung it tonight. Let him fertilize it so that we can produce and we can grow. Can I say something from the pulpit? It's, it's, I don't want to offend nobody tonight. <laughs> when life throws crap at you, can I say that? Well, I just, I guess I did. I told y'all I wasn't a regular preacher. I guess I'm not cut out of the same cloth. When life throws crap at you, just call it fertilizer. When hard times come at you, when the enemy is trying to bring you down with accusations and what people are gossiping and saying about you, just call it fertilizer. Say, I'm going to produce from this. I'm going to grow from this. I'm not going to let this messy stuff get me down. I'm going to grow. I'm going to produce. I'm going to be fruitful. I'm not going to waste another year. Amen. I'm going to grow from this. Amen. Somebody may dump on you. Just call it fertilizer. Get to work. People talking about you. Lift your hand and say, Lord, thank you for the fertilizer, for the fresh fertilizer. Amen. Whatever hard things come in your way, don't let it stop you from bearing fruit. Let it become fertilizer in your life. Would you make a declaration with me tonight as you stand with me? Stand up with me. I want us to make a declaration before the Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about when I talk about fertilizer? <laughs> Say, I'm going to grow from this. There's a gentleman that I've been working with for quite some time. He's got many struggles in his life. It's like God has called me to help the broken. This person called me, had a hard failure in his life. Been doing good, but failed. It was disappointing. I could have said to him, I'm through with you. I could have walked away. I couldn't. I didn't have to return his phone calls. I didn't have to do anything. But we, if I can say that, we are fertilizer to the world. <laughs> God uses strange things to confound the wise, doesn't he? God will use the messed up. There's a reason why you've been where you've been and what you've done. That God's going to use it to grow other people and to bless other people and to help other people. When you come in contact with somebody that's not producing fruit, there's a reason. There is always a reason. And it doesn't mean we get to go cut them down. What did the vine dresser do? He said, give me some more time. And that's what I've been asking the Lord. Father, give me some more time to work with some more people. God, I'll be a digger. I'll dig if I have to. God, I'll fertilize. God, I'll help pull the weeds. God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Are you willing to go to those lengths when everybody around you is producing? But when you see somebody that's not producing, what do you do? Can I help you dig? Can I help you get a hold of God? Can I help you grow in the Lord? Can I give you some wisdom of what I went through and how I came through that storm? Come on, your, your testimony is not to be kept silent. I guess that's, it took Janet years years she's 40 plus i don't know she 
She's almost as caught up with me. And all that she ever been through in her life, the dung of her life, God is using as fertilizer to help other people grow and to prosper. Come on. I want to tell somebody here. God's not through with you. God is not through when you mess up and the failures of your life. The vine dresser said, give me some more time. And you know what the Lord has done for us? He's given us more time to help more people. Amen. So I want us to make a, a declaration. Somebody say, this year is going to be different starting now. This year I'm growing. This year I'm bearing fruit. Thank you for the dung. Thank you for digging things out in my life. Thank you for not giving up on me. Thank you for another year. Thank you for the fruit that's coming out of my life. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Father. You know what the vineyard represents? It represents, excuse me, the, the uh, vine dresser. It repre he represents mercy. Jesus represents mercy. I know they need to cut it down. But he said, let me help them. Aren't you glad that Jesus has got mercy and grace extended to us? Whatever he's saying, whatever has hindered this tree from growing, give me some more time with it. He's saying, what, what, whatever's going on in this life, Lord, give me some more time to work with it. I'll help it. I'll dig around it. I'll fertilize it. Can I tell you, there was another tree that produced. We call it a cross. And now, I don't tell you, that tree produced abundant life. We call it a cross, don't we? But it was really a tree. It was planted in death, but it brought forth life. It was planted in great shame, but it brought forth glory. And today, you and I can stand here. You and I can stand here because of what Jesus has done for you. Amen. I'm glad that God's disappointment in me is not greater than his love for me. And his grace and his mercy. So I'm saying, along with you tonight, let's grow. Let's grow spiritually. Let's don't be like the church that Jesus saw. He saw hypocrisy in the church. He saw the pointing of the finger. That's what Jesus saw. He saw religious rhetoric going on in the church. They were not loving one another and caring about each other. I want to tell you tonight, when people walk through the doors, of Crossroads Community Church, I want them to see fruit all over the place. Amen? I don't want them to be disappointed. I want them to see a loving, compassionate, and a church that is more like Jesus. Not like the pastor. Not trying to be something that we're not. And trying to put on airs. May we become more like Jesus than ever before. Amen. And may we help people like Jesus did. Saying, I'm willing to dig. I'm willing to help somebody be fruitful. Amen. We're going to close in prayer tonight. Why don't you step out?
let's come forward and let's spend a few minutes in prayer. We've been talking about prayer and as we close tonight, I'm doing good. I'm right on time. I'm trying to be a little bit more like the Lord. He's always on time, isn't he? Call it fertilizer. 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 You've been looking at it like it's, why are they doing this to me? Call it fertilizer. I'm going to grow from this. I am not going to let this stop me from being fruitful. That divorce, call it fertilizer. That abuse, call it fertilizer. Amen. That layoff, call it fertilizer. That financial setback, call it fertilizer. Jesus. Jesus. I refuse to let my environment stop me from growing. I refuse to allow what people say and do to me stop me from growing. We are called to produce anyway. The Word tells us that the gates of hell are going to come against us. It's not a surprise. Call it fertilizer. You are an overcomer. You're already the victor. Amen. You're already called to be fruitful. You are the seed of Abraham. You are his seed, a blessed seed. Why aren't we producing? And when Jesus saw the condition of the church, and when he saw the condition of the people, he's wondering, I've been here in ministry three years in this synagogue. Why aren't the leaders of the church producing fruit? Woo. Jesus had something to say, didn't he? He was not wasting his words either. Let's pray. Lift your voice to the Lord. Begin to thank him. Come on, let those disappointments in your life propel you to be more fruitful. Oh God, I'm looking at a people here tonight, Lord. I see so much disappointment, Lord. I know many of their stories. I know the things they've gone through, Lord. But God, I've seen you digging in their lives, Lord. I've seen you, Lord Jesus, dig around their heart, God. And, and Lord, you just putting the fertilizer there, Lord. And it looks like a mess. It just feels, Lord, like things are not going to get better. But God, there's coming a season, Lord. There's coming a season for these trees, God, where they're going to produce like never before God they're going to be fruitful when you come and look at this tree it is going to be fruit on the vine it's going to be pleasing to you Lord I thank you Lord for digging around in our hearts tonight Lord I thank you Lord take everything the stony things of our heart away tonight Father dig around in my life Lord Father We've planted in good ground tonight. We're in good ground, Father. And you've called the church, you've called the body of Christ to be fruitful and not to allow the cares of this life, not to allow the things that come against us to stop us from producing, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the fertilizer. God, from now on, my disappointments are going to be fertilizer for my life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord, 
I will be still, God, and I'll let you, Lord, dig into my heart, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm growing, Father. I'm going to grow through this, Lord Jesus. God, I'm going to produce Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for working with me, Lord. God, when I didn't do nothing and I should have done something, thank you for working with me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't give up on me when I failed you over and over. I know it's been years. I should have done this, Lord, and I didn't do it, but you didn't give up. God, you've been patient. You've been kind. You've been long-suffering, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So tonight, God, in response to all that you have done, We allow you, Lord, to dig and fertilize. Dig and fertilize. Dig and fertilize. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't want to be like no other, no other preacher. I'm not trying to be anybody else. I want to produce figs if I'm a fig tree. I'm not trying to produce oranges. I don't want to be something that I'm not. Why don't you tell the Lord that? Say, Lord, I'm thankful for the way you made me. Come on, people want you to change. They want you to be what they want you to be. You can't be nobody else. You cannot be nobody else but what God has called you to do. Your calling and what God has placed in your life tonight and all that God wants you to do, He wants you to produce and thrive even in this sinful, dark world. He wants the church to be alive and to be thriving and to be full and abundant, prosperous and blessed. That's what He wants in your life. Why not let Him dig? Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I feel you. Let's take one more minute. Let's just lift our hands to him one more time and thank you. And say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you're not disappointed in me. No, you know what's going on. Lord, you know what's going on with my children. Anybody ever been disappointed in your children before? Come on, God sees it. Let God put fertilizer on it. Come on, let God touch it. Come on, let God put fertilizer on your finances. Let him put it on your business. Let him put it on your marriage. Let him grow you so your marriage is fruitful and blessed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Great is your mercy. Great is your grace, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church... The church, I can tell you where the church is. The church is in a place of great disappointment with the world. Can I tell you? Have you thought about it? The church is in a great disappointment with the world. We like, we want the world to be a fig tree. It's not. It can't produce figs. Quit expecting the world to be something that it cannot be. Because when the world walks in the door, they'll see the difference. They'll feel the difference. They will know the difference. But when they see you alive, and when they look at your life, and realize what all you have been through, and you're still standing, and you're still fruitful, my God, what a testimony. My God, what a great God 
What a gracious God. That's the difference. Quit trying to make the world line up. Come on. What Jesus wants is for the church to line up and produce. That's where we are. I'm telling you, I feel the Lord so strong in this meeting tonight. I'm telling you, you're going to lay in your bed tonight, some of you, and the Holy Spirit, the power of God is going to dig and fertilize in your heart and in your mind. Amen. The things you had just given up on, the things you said ain't never going to happen. Mm -mm. You got to have that. I'm never going to give up spirit. You got to let the Lord fertilize your heart. Read that word. Break it open. Fertilize your heart. Fertilize your heart. Fertilize your mind. Pray some more. Then pray some more. Then pray some more. Always praying without ceasing. That means never get. That's fertilizer. I got to let you go. Amen. Love y'all. And I am not disappointed and none of y'all amen what a wonderful god and i can tell you the church's best days are not here yet get ready for mighty revival get ready for a mighty outpouring get ready to see strongholds broken get ready to see great things in your life get ready to see a fruitful life